Ascendancy and Path of Exile are your biggest power-ups. They also can majorly change the way your character plays. So how do you get your Ascendancies? In this one, I'm going to show you the basics of how to get your Ascendancies, but also some hints and tips along your way to help you be more successful. Let's get right to it. Ascendancies in Path of Exile are gained via the Labyrinth. To actually get into the Labyrinth for the first time, you have to run Trials of Ascendancy. These are scattered throughout the campaign. Each character gets 8 Ascendancy points, but you only get 2 Ascendancy points from each Labyrinth, and there are 4 different levels of Labyrinth to get these 8 points. These Labyrinths are named Normal, Cruel, Merciless, and the Eternal Lab. Most players call the last lab the Uber Lab, not Eternal Lab, so you probably won't hear that phrase very often. The first Labyrinth requires 6 Trials of Ascendancy to be completed first, the second and third require 3 more each, and then the final one just requires an Offering of the Goddess. Thankfully, the completion of these trials are tied to your account per league, which means once your league starters run these, you don't need to run them again on any subsequent character. Even though the trials only take about 30 seconds to run a piece, this is actually really nice because they slow down your levelling no end as you've got to find them first. Once you have the 6 Trials of Ascendancy for the normal Labyrinth, go to Act 3 and you'll see this tomb type thing. And this tomb has 6 indicators on it that are glowing green. If you don't have all the trials, you will have less than 6 glowing. Once you're fully lit up, click on the front door and it will open upwards, you can now go in and grab the waypoint. Once you have this, you can just get here from any waypoint in the game, it's much much quicker. So what are these Trials of Ascendancy and where the hell do you get them? Well first off, they're small areas completely full of traps, and luckily we know roughly where each of these are. For Normal Lab, the first one is in Act 1 in the Lower Prison, the next two are in Act 2, the first one in the Crypt Level 1, and the second in the Chamber of Sin Level 2. The final three are located in Act 3, and they're in the Crematorium, the Catacombs, and the Imperial Garden. For the Cruel Lab, these are located in Act 6 and Act 7. For the Act 6 one, it's in the Prison, and for the Act 7 one, it's in the Crypt and the Chamber of Sin Level 2 again. And the Merciless Lab Trials are in Act 8, 9, and 10, which are located in the Bathhouse, the Tunnels, and the Ossuary, respectively. Now for the Uber Lab, you used to have to find 6 Trials of Ascendancy randomly scattered throughout maps. Because it was RNG based, it could take days to get your last Ascendancy. Thankfully those days are gone, and now all you need is an Offering of the Goddess, which you can get from a single one of these Trials in maps. But these can still be quite annoying to find, so I tend to run the Delve, which also has a chance to drop them. Apart from the normal lab, these are no joke, and they will kill you if you're trying to run them too early. So when should you actually aim to run them? I run the first one somewhere between level 31 and 33, and this tends to coincide with me getting to the Crystal Veins waypoint in Act 4. For Cruel Lab, I tend to run this just before entering the temple to kill Arakali at the end of Act 7, and for Merciless, I run this just before I kill the last Katava in Act 10. The Uber Lab, I run this around level 80, and I want at least 4000 life if I'm a melee character. Non melee characters can do it much earlier, but they have to keep moving. If they get hit, you will get one shot crit. Ok, so you've run other trials, what to expect when you get into the Labyrinth? The Labyrinths are made up of interconnected areas that form a maze. The higher the level of the Labyrinth, the more interconnected areas you'll get to get to the end. It can be hard to find your way through the Labyrinth. Thankfully, a great set of guys has set up a resource to help you get through it. Introducing www.polab.com For each Labyrinth, someone runs it each day and then records the path through the Labyrinth. As a beginner, the key things you care about are as follows. The interconnected lines between areas tell you roughly what side of the arena the exit will be at. So it could be top right, bottom right, or top left. The next thing you'll care about is the areas marked with a D. This stands for Dark Shrine. A Dark Shrine is always located in a little offshoot in the area accessible by a switch. These can be hard to find until you get used to looking for them. Dark Shrines can give you a wide range of bonuses that will help you complete the lab. The three main ones you're looking for most importantly, traps are disabled in the final trial. This disables traps in the final boss room, which will make the lab so, so much easier. Second up is some kind of power up for your character. These comes in many forms, such as character always crits, or run really, really fast. As a minimum, on my first run through each lab, except for the normal lab, I will go for these two. In the normal lab, traps are not in the final boss room anyway, so this one is kind of pointless. Once I've found these two, I'll stop looking for Dark Shrines. The final group of Dark Shrines either make the boss drop extra things like treasure keys or unique items, or they can give you two rolls in the enchant thing in the final room which enchants your gear. When running through the interconnected rooms you want to find the shortest path to the end without going through any room that has the big dangerous trap icon. This has so many traps that it will likely kill most characters. 
Now, the Ascendancy altar at the end of the labyrinth is protected by a boss named Azaro. And you don't have to fight him just once, you have to fight him three times. The first time, you need to drop him down to 33% health, the second time, 66% health, and then the final time, you kill him. Now, this boss is helped by different creatures that come up in the room. If you kill these bosses, you will drop less treasure keys each time you kill the boss, and treasure keys open chests at the, in the end of the arena. These come in many flavours, and I'm not going to go through much detail here, because not many of them cause many problems. It's important to note that each time you fight Zaro, he gets stronger and stronger. In the last round, he can one-shot most players because he crits almost every hit. Now, Azaro can also use two different kinds of weapons. One is a sword, where he'll do big swipes across the arena. The other is a hammer, where he creates a circle on the floor and does a big crash. The hammer I find easier to deal with. It's just get out of the circle. For the big blade, you have to try and work out where he's going to fire it and keep rotating around him to make it less likely he's going to actually hit you. For the next video in this 101 series, I'm going to give you a full walkthrough of Act 1, fully explaining why I pick what I pick and how I run the areas. You'll be able to find this top left right now. And with that, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.